Hey everyone, Disturbed Shadow here to continue on with my review of the Disturbed discography. Today we'll be talking about the band's fourth album, which was released back in 2008, and that is Indestructible. So let's just dive right in. So the first track of note is, of course, the opening track, the title track, Indestructible, which I think really sets the tone for this album. And they really come out swinging with this one. It's just this big, heavy, like, groovy guitar riff that just jumps you right into into the... the into the mood of this album before a short little like sound effect intro reminiscent of the intro to uh, one by Metallica where it sort of has an air raid siren and like just sounds of war basically because Indestructible is sort of an anthem for the soldiers to sort of support our troops type of songs and I think it does a really good job of portraying that message but also being a kick-ass song it's just a really fun listen all the way through and just got a really fun solo and just really cool guitar work all the way through and it's this really pounding rhythmic uh, sort of marching beat drum line that sort of fits in with the sort of militaristic tone they're going for on this track and I think like I said it does a really good job of setting the tone for this album it's just it's such a fantastic song track number two inside the fire this song starts off with this really cool uh, bass intro with sort of lots of effects placed on it and there's other electronic effects in the background It's just a really cool and interesting sound to it and It's just a really great way to start off the, the the track before it gets into this really catchy guitar riff This is just a really fantastic song overall it's just so many cool riffs and drum parts all the way through and then it's just a really stellar vocal performance from David Draymond where it's sort of shows off his range of more uh, intense vocals and then the, the more melodic type of stuff in the in the chorus and i really love dan donegan's uh, guitar work on this track whether it's the really awesome main guitar riff or the really intricate well comparatively for for some of the previous stuff the intricate solo that is on this compared to a lot some of the other disturbed solos is really fast and then it's comes in with this really cool melodic bit after the solo ends. It's just a really great feel to it. And I just love the way everything comes together on this track. Track number three, Deceiver, which is another one that sort of has this very rhythmic drum line to it to start it off. It's just a really heavy track all the way through. And David does some like growly type of vocals on the bridge to mix things up a bit. He does it occasionally, he did it like it's very similar to what they did with Just Stop off of Ten Thousand Fists. Where has just very much more aggressiveness and intensity in his vocals on the bridge, and then a very uh, more melodic uh, uh, chorus where it really shows off his melodic vocals. When I really like it, I think on the final chorus they sort of, or the, the, all the choruses actually, they blend in uh, uh, some sort of atmospheric synths in the background to uh, just add another depth of the of the music there. Just a really solid track overall. Track number four, The Night, is probably my favorite track of this album. It's one of my favorite Disturbed tracks of all time. It's just got such a great feel to it. It just starts off with this really slow but sort of complex guitar riff. Sort of more complex than most of the stuff that Disturbed usually does on their guitar work on some of the previous albums. I just really like the way it just comes up. It's just such a really cool sound to it and just a really stellar vocal performance. On the, on the verses that sort of pull you into the track. It's just really amazing singing that he's doing there. And then in the chorus, his voice just soars so high above everything else. It's so melodic and so good. It's just really catchy and really well-written lyrics. It's just The song has everything. And it probably has the best guitar solo that Dan Donegan has ever performed. It's just such an amazing solo. It's not like crazy or shreddy like some other bands do, but it's just... If you really take the time to listen to what's happening on the solo, it's just really, really awesome. It's sort of alternating between these more simplistic, sort of melodic bits and just throwing in lots of, like, heavy picking stuff in between. There's, it just has such a really cool sound to it. And it's just, like I said, it's one of the best solos out there for a Disturbed song. And it just gives the song that extra edge, which makes it one of my personal favorite tracks from this band, because it's just so good. Track number five is a re-recording of a song that Disturbed wrote way back before even The Sickness came out that didn't actually get included on this album. And there was a very crappy 
recording of it that was circulating around the internet that people had, but they finally took the time to go back to that track and bring us the amazing song that is Perfect Insanity. It's just, there's so much great stuff on this on this album, I mean on this song. It just comes in swing with this really heavy drum bit that sort of has a, a cool effect on it to just, I don't know, give it a, a unique kind of sound. And the guitar riff on this track is just so good. That it just has such an amazing sound to it. And I think that it works really well with the guitar production that they went with on on this album compared to what they had on the original recording of it. It just gave it this extra edge. It's just so much more oomph behind it. And uh, David's vocals are really top notch on this one. Especially compared to the original where it was a bit rough around the edges where this is very focused vocal delivery. And then what's really awesome about this is the solo on it. Now Perfect Insanity had been before 10,000 Fist the only song that had anything remotely close to a guitar solo on it. But it was very simplistic and just a few notes. But what they did with the new version is this really short but sweet and very shreddy type of solo. Well at least shreddy for what you would expect from a disturbed song where it's a lot more shreddy on the guitars than a lot of the other solos that Dan Donegan does. It just makes this song that much better. It's just a really fantastic song. It's definitely one of the better tracks on the album. Track number six, Haunted, which is another song that has a really cool bass intro. It's just lots of cool effects on the bass to give it a very unique sound. And then it's actually sort of more in the front of the guitars, which is sort of turned down in the mix on the beginning of this track. It's very sort of interesting wobbly sort of sounding effect on the guitars in the background. This is a really interesting feel to it. Track number seven, Enough, which is, I think, looking at the lyrics and listening to them, it sort of sounds like it's sort of another song that's sort of about soldiers, it's sort of the, the losses that people face when our soldiers die in war, sort of what I think is happening lyrically. And then uh, the music sort of fits along with that theme, it's sort of another song that has this really sort of marching beat drum line to it in the in the in the verses at least and then it gets a bit more pulled back and simplistic for the 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 chorus which sort of puts the focus on david's very melodic vocals on this track and then there's a lot of uh, interesting stuff in the drums layer throughout this whole track to uh keep things interesting like uh after the the second chorus so they go into the bridge where the the, the bass and the drums just really pick up and then uh, might just play so fast and then just really goes to town on the double bass and just has a really this song like really shows off uh, Mike's drumming prowess or sort of does the more rhythmic type of stuff and the, the more really fast hectic type of stuff and the more pulled back simplistic stuff and it all blends together really nicely and the transitions between them are so good it's just a really solid track that really shows off his drumming capabilities. Track number eight The Curse is another personal favorite of his album it's just got this really great catchy groovy guitar riff on it that just sort of just has this great sound on it and then between the choruses they just have these fantastic uh layering of guitars with sort of lead guitars with a lot of interesting effects on them just layered in with the rhythm guitars so have a really great sound which i'm not sure exactly how they'd replicate uh, live because they only have the one guitarist but it still sounds really great on this album i just love the way that everything comes together on this track track number nine torn the main thing I want to talk about on this track is the guitar solo. It's just so good. There's just really so much emotion behind it and everything about it is fantastic. And then there's just so much wah on it. It just has a really unique sound to it. And then just everything comes together really nicely for just a really a great sounding uh, track. And then on the vocals, David's singing is just top notch when he's doing these big soaring melodic choruses. They're just, they're just so good. Track number 10, Criminal. This song is interesting and it's just got a lot of cool guitar bits throughout the whole thing and they're always throwing in different uh, riffs as the song progresses and this really fantastic drumming. It's another one that really uh, shows off how good of a drummer Mike is and just sort of throws around all these, these more pulled back simplistic stuff for the choruses and it's the more crazy stuff for the, the 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 verses and then the, the sort of parts between the the second chorus and then the end of the song 
There's just lots of crazy drumming stuff. It's just a really solid track. Like pretty much everything on this album. Track number 11, Divide. This is another one that sort of has a great blend of sort of these aggressive uh, rhythm guitars and the, the lead guitars have these cool effects on them that are thrown around in the uh, verses to keep things a bit interesting. And this is another track with a really solid guitar solo. It's a bit more fast paced than some of the other solos on the album, it's just, but it's just got a great sound to it. And I just love the way it fits really nicely into this track. And finally, track number 12, Facade, which lyrically is about a woman who is suffering from domestic abuse. And I think David's lyrics on this track are just top notch. And what's really cool about this track is it's sort of a callback to the sickness days where they throw in a lot of these sort of electronic sound effects to uh, mix things up a bit. This has a really interesting sound to it, the way that those sound effects sort of blend in with the guitar work. And then this is another track which has a really solid uh, guitar solo with a lot of wah in it. It's just, I don't know, just very signature Dan Donegan solo. It's a great way to uh, sort of conclude this album. Anyway, that's it for the tracks themselves. Now let's uh, just do a quick rundown of the band members themselves, even though I've sort of been talking about them a lot as we go along. First up, David Draymond on the vocals. This guy is, like I keep saying, one of my favorite uh, metal vocalists. He just has so much power to his voice. It just has a very unique sound to it. And he very tastefully throws around his uh, uh, signature sort of animalistic growly sound effects that he does. And they're only in a few tracks on this album, but they sort of add another layer to the, to the songs when they are included. And this, he th also throws more growly type of vocals like in enough and in deceiver that sort of mix things up a bit there too as well to keep things interesting and like i said his clean vocals are just top notch dan donegan on guitar i think this might be his best guitar work with the band it's just all these big meaty guitar riffs like on indestructible inside the fire in the night and perfect insanity i can just go on and on listening to all these and then just so many great solos. There are so many solos on this album, especially compared to the like four or five that were on uh, Ten Thousand Fist. It was sort of always perfectly fit the song. There's the more crazy, uh, really intricate stuff like on the night, which, like I said, is just such a fabulous guitar solo. And then the uh, more straight to the point stuff, like the really sort of shreddy but short uh, solo on Perfect Insanity, where you just always has the song, the solo that perfectly fits the song. It's just so great whenever they're included. And like I said, his riffs are fantastic. Mike Rangren on the drums, like I've been saying throughout this whole album, there's so many great songs that just show off his drumming talent. So it's some more crazy stuff like on Perfect Insanity or the, the more variety type of songs like on Enough where it sort of has the more rhythmic marching type of stuff and then the more crazy double bassy kind of stuff and then the more... Uh, pulled back simplistic type of stuff so he sort of covers all his bases here and does a fantastic job keeping the time for this band and I just love all his drumming performances on this album it's just really solid and finally John Moore on bass doing a single performance with this band and he's still a really fantastic bass bassist and he just has a lot of moments where he really stands out or it's uh, more in your face type of stuff like on Perfect Insanity, there's a part where the guitar sort of pulls back and then the guitar, or the bass sort of stands out a lot more. It's doing all this kind of stuff that's different from what the guitars are doing, so I like to hear that when the bass sort of goes off and does its own thing. And, like I always uh, like to mention, the bass is turned up nice and loud on this album. It's probably the, the most audible bass on any Disturbed album so far. It's just, you can always hear what he's doing with it. Even if he's just following along with the guitars, there's a lot of uh, times we can just hear what he's doing and I like to hear that and then there are moments where the sort of bass sort of gets these cool moments to shine like on inside the fire and on haunted where it sort of cool effects on the bass and sort of more takes a more forefront approach and just I like to hear that the bass is doing some interesting things and making things mixing things up a bit like that to just keep things interesting anyway that wraps up my discussion of the band members themselves and just some final thoughts on the album I think this might be one of the Serbs' best musical performances, even though it's not my personal favorite because that will always be 10,000 fists for me because that's like the first metal album I ever got into. But from a technical standpoint, there's a lot of fantastic stuff happening on this track, whether it's crazy solos like on The Night 
or Perfect Insanity are just really solid guitarists, like on Indestructible, Inside the Fire, The Night. All these songs just have these really solid guitar riffs. And it just keeps things interesting. And there's lots of cool stuff where they have cool effects on the bass or the guitars, or they bring in these electronic effects like they did on The Sickness, which they brought back for the song Facade, sort of keep things interesting there. And just lots of great guitar work, lots of great drum work, lots of great everything. It's just, this song is like a very, or this album is like one of the best disturbed albums out there and it's definitely worth checking out. And if it's your first time checking out the band, this is a good place to start. Well, any of them will be a really good place to start, but this is also one of those ones that is really good to get into this band with. So anyway, keep myself from rambling on too long because that's sort of what I've been doing. I'll just uh, wrap things up here. Go check this album out, and if you want to see more our reviews, be sure to uh, subscribe to check them out. And if you enjoyed this review, be sure to give it a like. But until the next review, I will see you guys then.